Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us through Zach Lau, W1VT, who is a senior technical person at the ARRL. And Dave W1GBA had written to him about whether or not to use a ballon at his dipole antenna. Now, I've talked about this many times before, and Zach and I have slightly differing opinions. My personal experience has been that the ballon kind of complicates things. And I remember well, uh, back in the s about 76 or early 1977, I was helping in Biloxi, Mississippi with a uh, special event station involving the Boy Scouts. And we were putting up an 80 meter dipole and it was very low to the ground. And the guy insisted on a ballon. This was the new way of doing things putting a ballon on there. We put the ballon on there and could not get the antenna to tune. He had to take off, so I immediately, after he left, went up there, took the ballon out, connected the coax, directed the antenna, and we had a great time on 80 meters. Okay, so my experience with it. Zach, however, is of the opinion, as are some of my friends, Lou and other people, that um, you should put the ballon up there. Well, why is the ballon needed there in the first place? The reason is because coaxial cable is unbalanced and the antenna is balanced, and so you should have something in between to correct for that. Now, I just threw two more uh, jargon terms at you, balanced and unbalanced. Uh, so let's explain what they are. Okay, here is an antenna. Now, when this goes up in voltage, this goes down in voltage. So if we were plotting um, voltage here, this would be high and this would be low. In other words, they're opposite each other. They're balanced. And what that means is as one goes up, the other goes down. And then when you come a half cycle later, this one goes up and this one goes down. Okay, balanced. Now, if you take a piece of coax like this, and we look at the coax, which has a center conductor, okay, and a shield. And this piece of LMR 400 has two shields. It's got this aluminum shield, and it's got a, co a tinned copper uh, shield around it as well. It's very, very well uh, shielded. Okay, now this shielding is usually connected to ground. And then the inner conductor is the one that has the voltage on it. So what's happening is you've got an inner conductor, okay, inner conductor. And when the voltage goes up on this one, this one's just connected to ground. And then the voltage will come the other way on this one, okay the volt outer conductor is still connected to ground. So the only part of it that is moving in voltage is the center conductor, okay? Now, we call this unbalanced for the obvious reason that this is the two unbalanced. Um, the two conductors are not moving opposite each other, but one's holding still while the other's moving. Now, ideally, you should connect this to a, uh, uh, put a ballon between them, and this is what it would look like in a proper case. You'd have your wire like this. The wire would come down into a transformer, like that. Okay, so you've got plus, minus, minus plus over here, okay. And then you've got another transformer winding, and you can do this as an auto transformer as you want. And this side over here is grounded, and this side goes to the center conductor of our coax, and this other side is grounded. The transformer doesn't care whether it's balanced or not, but it will go through, uh, there's usually a ferrite core here, 
will go through. So this is the transformer ballon. Okay, uh, and we want in this case a one-to-one -one ratio in there because this is 50 ohms, this is 50 ohms. Okay, so now what, uh, what happens if we connect this directly to it? Okay, we've got uh, this connected, say, to the center of the coax. And then we've got the coax down here, and we take the shield and connect it over here. This is unbalanced to balanced. Well, here's the part. This will work. It will work for you. It's a, a time-honored way of doing things. But it can create problems, and let me tell you why. As Zach points out, remember the skin effect? RF travels on the skin of the conductor, which is why this has got aluminum in the center for weight, and it's copper-coated, copper-plated, okay, and the RF actually travels through the copper part. Now, what about the return conductor. The inside of the coax here is the inside of this aluminum shield. Okay? The inside of the aluminum shield is the return. All right? But watch what happens here. We've got this is okay here as the voltage varies back and forth. But the voltage will come from the inside up onto the antenna and reflected voltage will come down on the outside. Now, Zach actually goes so far as to call this a three-conductor cable because you've got on the skin of the inner conductor, inside the skin of the outer conductor, and on the outside of the skin uh, of the outer conductor. Now, note, you look at that and go, wait a minute, those are shorted. Well, at RF, at RF they are not. Uh, so you can have current <coughs> floating down that side. This will cause two problems, a higher SWR, which may or may not be a problem, but this, um, the red RF here, can come down into the station and create mischief. Okay? It can create problems for you. So you get RFI into things, and it's coming down the outside of that conductor. So there's two things that you can do here. One, you can live with it and just make this cheap thing here. Or you can create something that will stop this RF current from traveling down the outside. Now, clearly, the transformer ballon does that. The transformer ballon that we talked about just converts. It will have the you go on the inside of this and on the outside of the inner conductor. Another thing you can do is put something here that will stop that current, that will stop it, that will create a very high impedance so that it won't pass, like an infinite resistance or something. And one thing that does this are ferrite beads, and you can put ferrite beads on the coil around this thing here. And this will allow you to cause this current to just be uh, rejected and it won't go any further. In other words, this current is choked by these ferrite beads and so we call this a choke ballon. Choke ballons are always one-to-one. -one, so there's no transformer action taking place here. But if you do this, you can eliminate the return on the outside. You can buy these from MFJ from a whole bunch of people, just put chokes on there. Or 
you can create a quickie coax melon. Now I'm going to draw this about full size. So let's, we take coax, here's the coax, and we coil it into a loop about nine inches in diameter, about five or six turns like that, and then out that way. Well, if you figure out what that is, it's close to 25 feet of coax. And at over a dollar a foot, that's a greater, greater than $25 uh, choke that you can put there. If you've got spare uh, cable sitting around, fine, it's no cost. If you have to buy extra coax to do that, you might look at going with the ferrite beads. They might be uh, cheaper. So, is coax a three conductor cable? Well, in the sense that RF, where you have your feeding RF on the inside of that jacket, okay, going up to the antenna, and then the outside of the jacket can conduct stray RF down back into the shack. So, lots of ways of doing that. So, to um, Again, putting a ballon there, my recommendation from my experience is um, try it first, just direct connect. Uh, and if you don't have any trouble with it, leave well enough alone. If you do have trouble with it, try the uh, wrapping up a few loops of uh, coax, although that does add weight up uh, near the antenna and see if that does the job. If not, put in um, some ferrite beads. If that doesn't do the job, then actually obtain a one-to-one -one ballon from like ballon designs or something like that. Uh, there's also a way of making that ballon uh, as an auto transformer, but uh, that would not normally work in the one-to-one -one case. You need two windings uh, on the coil. So. Uh, there you have it. Uh, I would say, is it best practice to put a ballon there, either a choke ballon or an actual transformer ballon? And I would have to say, reluctantly, yes, it is best practice, but barely, because uh, my own, like I said, my own personal experience is it's not needed. So. There you've got two sides of the same coin. I think I've tried to explain why a ballon, why not a ballon, which one would be best, and so on. And we've talked a little bit about what's going on inside the cable. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe and click like, uh, because that feeds the YouTube algorithm and makes them very happy. It also brings more viewers to the channel. Please share. Uh, it's very easy if you go underneath the video page, uh, there's a thing where it says share. You click on that, you can uh, click on a link, you can uh, give them an address to send it to and so on. Also, uh, please uh, throw something in the tip jar or go to patreon.com slash ke0og and help keep this channel going forward. Until we next meet, 73.